Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Whew, I'm in my car. I'm at work. So I apologize. Let me get comfortable. It's hot. I'm in Santa Monica. I just raced over, did a hit, and now I'm here with you all. Hi. Hi. It's been a minute. Sorry I haven't uh, jumped on. I had a small surgery um, a couple of weeks ago, and I needed to take some time off. So I'm doing much better. But hi guys, how's everybody doing? Where's everyone chiming in from? We have a cool guest today, Lisa Kearney. That's a big one. Lisa Kearney is awesome. Uh, was the host on um, ESPN Sports Center. And now she works for FanDuel. And hopefully we can get her on. But uh, her story is really interesting. I don't know how she does it all. She has four kids. She has a a bomb job uh, with FanDuel. So um, hopefully you guys can stay tuned for that. But hi, how's everybody doing? Everybody good? Um, okay, I see Lisa's jumped on, so let's give her a second. All right, here we go. I see her, I see her, I can't wait. The other thing too is like service is always a bit dicey. So yeah, hi, Mama. hey lady. You fit hi. this little. Oh my gosh, you look amazing! I'm First so excited. Of all, to talk to I you. have looked up to you, and I have loved your work for years and years and years. You were on Sports Center. You always did such a great job, and you were very. You were. Oh, I wanted to make sure I used the correct word: captivating on camera. You just you just have that energy that um, is confident. Uh, you know your stuff, and you're welcoming. So thank you for being a part of this. Thank you. Yeah. All that right back to you. I love what you do with this series. Like literally, I was walking my dog, and it was before you reached out to me. I was walking my dog, and I was listening to one of your interviews, and I was just getting so much energy from your guest that was just talking about mm -hmm. balance and giving ourselves grace and i was like yes sister preach like we like women need to come together and know that yes there's a lot on our plates yes we have a lot of power now how do we step into that power how do we elevate each other how do we also say like you know i can't do everything mm -hmm. all at the same time and also that's yeah. okay hey, like you know um i think giving ourselves grace is so important and um, so I'm just so excited. Literally, that was before you reached out to me. And I just, I love yeah. following what you do. You look gorgeous. And um, it's really fun. I love all your positivity. Well, so thanks for having me. That. And I, I appreciate your support too, because I didn't always feel that way about myself, especially as a woman in a sports broadcasting industry, where I always felt like I didn't do enough. And I put myself in almost like I needed to be as smart as the analyst, which of course that's impossible. You, I didn't put the pads on. I didn't play pro football. And I just felt like sometimes I was judged differently because I was a woman. So there was this like sort of imposter syndrome that I would walk into every time I would go into a production meeting, almost to, to the point, Lisa, where as the host of the show, I would be insecure to actually ask for clarity because I was like, I think I'm supposed to actually know the answer. <laughs> Right, right, right. I have a lot of stats. I just, I mean, I'm throwing off in, in it's being also on these um, very visible platforms as you are as well. And, you know, um, I've always been a statistics person. I love numbers for whatever reason. Like I can read any stats and it just like sticks to my brain. So in doing interviews on Sports Center, and like, I would have all these like nuggets and, you know, tagging out with different numbers and different things. But I think you're right when it gets to the point, like I can offer all of that, but also having the maturity and enough experience yeah. and enough confidence to say like, what did That's you mean it. by that? Actually, do you mind? I, I'm not sure what you meant, you know, just to be comfortable in your own skin and be like, actually, I'm not sure. Can you like say that in a different way? So um, that, I mean, you bring up a really good point because early on in my career, certainly, I was like, I have to know everything and just, you know, I want to be an encyclopedia and, mm -hmm. you know, women in sports, obviously we came along at a time where we were still very much like elbowing, elbowing out our space and 
carving out a way that was like, no, we deserve this seat at the table. And there's a reason why, and we, we're here contributing in a positive way. So um, yeah, that, that and, it's very that much really followed by me as well. You're absolutely right. There is something about the confidence to have the ability to say, you know what, can you clarify what you meant by that? So people tuning in right. that think by asking a question, it makes you look like you don't know what you're talking about. I think it's the opposite. And you're right. I had to learn that over time that not only put my ego aside, but maybe for the audience at home that may not know, that's okay to get clarity. But I was so insecure as a woman in this field that I was like, me asking right. might make me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. So I had to work through that to actually, right. you're right, to build the confidence to be able to go, no, it's okay, pump the brakes, I can ask this question. But isn't it cool that now, I mean, I've been in this business 20 years, almost 20 years, isn't it cool now that we have a safe space to be able to be like, hey, we're all in this together. We're all, you know, it's not like we're in our little silos anymore where it's like we're competing against each other and there's mm -hmm. only one spot for a woman mm -hmm. here and only one spot for a woman here. So like how open should I be? How vulnerable am I allowed to be to be able to kind of like reach out to other women and be like, are you feeling this too? Or, you know, you know, not like, not like we've been, persecute our entire careers because I've been given incredible gifts to be able to have opportunities. And I'm so grateful um, to be able to step into my power and my voice in those opportunities. And, you know, like I said, like kind of have an opportunity to like elbow my way around and um, show that we belong in sports. So, um, but I think it's, it's becoming aware of your self-confidence really elevating that and then being like, all right, it's okay to be vulnerable. Like I'm, I'm okay now yeah, to and that was be able to do that. The question I was going to ask you, cause I, there's a, a lot I want to get to, and I know I only have a limited time. I do want to talk about the landscape of broadcast and how you see it shifting because you made an interesting transition. You got into the betting world, but since we're on the topic of authenticity, <laughs> That is something that I, I, I've always sort of seen in you that you've always maintained, but how do you maintain authenticity? Cause that's a great point in an industry that tells you what to wear or, or maybe perhaps previously would tell you what to wear, how to act, almost sort of be the second tier to the, the, the bigger story or the, the more male dominated story. How have you, how have you in the past and maybe how are you doing it now to be this sort of authentic, Almost I look to you as someone giving me permission to be more authentic in this world, you know? Yeah, thanks for that. And that's a great question. And actually I have a very, very much a key, like pivotal turning point in my career when I was at ESPN specifically, because, you know, when I started out, like my very first broadcasting job was in Montana, Butte, Montana, tiny, tiny, tiny market. Um, it's like 296, like it was so small. And I had, I had a great opportunity to be the sports oh. director there when I first got there. Like, it's so crazy to even say that now, like given that we're in the business, but I thought I had to be in like a black blazer, like very buttoned up, like we're just starting out, like, you know, um, and I remember the first time that I like laughed on the air and it was like, oh, this is okay. Like we can, actually show like a human side to this broadcast and that was very early on so anyway um i never forgot that and i got out of the black blazer which even my like i'm at my parents house right now because i'm in kansas city for the draft and um i my parents still are like do you still have that black blazer <laughs> like every broadcast so anyway years 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 later you get more and more comfortable with what you're doing and you kind of like put your guard down a little bit but maintain that professionalism Fast forward to ESPN and, you know, Sports Center is such a machine that goes so fast, you know, I mean, you're getting shot sheets over your shoulder and you've got guests flying and you're, you know, the elements move very, very fast. And in the beginning, you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose. So all you're thinking is like, okay, I just don't want to mess up this thing, this thing. And then once you get into the flow, I mean, you know, then you're more comfortable. But I had a meeting, um, I'd like, I, I'm a big fan of reaching out to my bosses and like, hey, how am I doing? Like, I'm, a, I'm coachable, like to help me improve. Like, I want to be better. I always want to be, I, even still, I'm like, 
telling my boss, I'm like, I want to be better. How, tell me what I can do to continue to improve. Um, and so this one boss, Rob King, he um, headed up Sports Center at, at the time for a short time when I was when I was there. And he said, you know what? Like when you're doing Sports Center, go up and like like relax in your chair. You know, like we don't have to be like so buttoned up with like our hands on our you know like very stiff. And he's like, go try that. And so like it was it it, it was not just hear your physical posture. You know, try this but it was like you know what you have permission mm -hmm. to just go be you and it was a really um pivotal moment for me to be like you know what you're right let's have fun with this and let me bring my whole self to this and so um you know then then i kind of um was able to escalate at, at sports center and espn in a way that like i don't know if i would have as quickly as i did unless i was really took a step back and was like you know what you're right it should just be me so let's yeah, just go do that contagious. when i see someone like you sort of being unapologetic about who you are and what you represent it gives so many other women permission to be that same way in a very intimidating context right you're on sports center like you said like that is mm -hmm. that's the cream of the crop however now we're seeing a shift in media. And you made quite an interesting pivot in your career because you were with Sports Center for many years. Uh, <laughs> I've had a very successful career. And you went into the betting world and you started working for FanDuel, a very popular show called More Ways to Win. People love it. Um, why did you decide to make that pivot? And how do you believe the broadcast industry is shifting? Because in my very limited knowledge, I went to USC and you have these students who are still going to broad, broadcast school. Some are taking their masters and are their jobs yeah. available? It, it, like it's an interesting conversation to have as someone who's made quite the pivot in, a, in an industry where I feel like betting is the future of how people are watching sports. Mm -hmm. um, a, why did you get into it? Why did you make the switch? And B, how do you see the, the, the landscape of broadcast media? So I had been at ESPN um, doing Sports Center, NFL Live, NFL Insiders at the time, which is not even there anymore, which is like probably dating myself. But um, and then I hosted Fantasy Football Now, which I absolutely loved and I loved our team. Um, so towards the end, I was really, really um, my plate was very, very full. So I was I was working six days a week because I was doing Sports Center five days a week, and then I added Fantasy Football Now on Sundays, and so. Um, it kind of became, and I have four small, I, at the time, all four of my kids were like very little. So I have four kids and, um, the most amazing supportive husband in the entire world. Thank God. Um, I love him so much. And he's literally the reason why I'm talking to you here today about these really cool things I'm doing. Um, he's the reason why, but, um, when I was there, it, it just like, it struck me. Like I was giving the best part part of myself and the most time that I had and the, the, the greatest amount of energy that I had all to work. So when I would come home, I would have to sleep and I would have to eat a little bit. And I, I'm, I, I am very driven by fitness. I have to get workouts in like I, I like need that in my life. So, you know, there's compromises that happen just because there's only 24 hours in a day. And so I was finding that I wasn't sleeping very much. I was giving to my kids what I could, but I was so mm. tired. And then I had to like reset and go back to, you know, sports center and, and be like ready to go again for the next day. And so that grind was, I think, I, I just realized I needed a better balance. And I loved my time at ESPN so much that it was really hard for me to say, you know what, this is a time in my career that I need to literally, Aaron, bet on myself. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I, you know, I had a contract on the table to stay at Sports Center and um, you know continue on there for for a few more years and I just said you know Norby it was my Sports Center boss at the time and I was like I li I can't continue to do what I'm doing right now and give to my children how I need to be able to and um, so I I I walked away which was so um, I kind of was like am I really doing this like am I actually leaving that on the table, but I did. And um, it's it's the best thing I did for my kids and for me and for my husband, for my family. And then weeks later, um, my marketing agent was like, hey, there's this guy calling 
wants to talk to you. He's with FanDuel, he's, but he's in Los Angeles. And I was like, um, yeah, I'm not going to take a job in Los Angeles, but like, of course I'll talk to him. And Kevin Grigsby is my boss. And we talked for like an hour and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to like, I need to collaborate with this guy in some way. So I flew to Los Angeles, I did the interview and I was like flying on the way back. And I was like, oh, really want this job like oh no now i'm like now i'm like not not driving 76 miles to bristol every day anymore because i i live in greenwich um no i'm gonna just fly across the country every week instead and truthfully people think it's crazy but i've actually indexed a lot more time for my family and been able to have a schedule that's more on my terms than um you know being gone like 80 hours a week at espn so um you know it was it was a decision that was like, all right, I'm gonna spend a lot of time in Los Angeles, but I'm only there a few days a week. And it's really um, heavy in the NFL season, obviously. And then in the off season, I have a bit more flexibility. So that was great. But you asked me about getting into the sports betting space and the timing. And um, this is a very yeah. long-winded answer, and I'm sorry. But when I left ESPN, the password repeal had just happened. It was the spring of 2018. And so, um, you know, states were free to legislate on their own sports betting, like Supreme Court was like, have at it, you know, everybody like makes decisions on their own now. So each sport, each state, then would just legislate on their own, and they would either approve it or not. So here we are, um, you know, five years later, and think I mean, COVID, COVID was for a lot of people a really, really hard time from a business standpoint. Obviously, personally, everybody has their own story, but from a business standpoint, um, you know, some businesses were hit a lot harder than others, and ours took off in a way that, like, no one ever could have predicted. And so, um, you know, we had live sports still going because of horse racing, which is a backbone of our company and, and um, our handle. And so, we were buoyed because of horseback, um, uh, because of horse racing, and then, um, you know, it just everything has started to evolve very quickly. And really, like, I kind of, like, caught yeah. caught the train as it was just getting on the tracks and going really fast. So um, I was, I'm was i very blessed to be able to be at FanDuel. And all that said on the business side, the people are the best. Like, like, the people I work with, I mean, leaders create culture. And I just, I'm so grateful to have these beautiful, family-oriented people that want to just do business at the right way at a very high level. And so, um, you know, I had an opportunity to build a show from nothing with my boss, Kevin Grigsby. And, you know, here we are, we just wrapped up our fifth season and our show has never looked better, which is really exciting. So here we are. So that I, I literally bet on myself and <laughs> joined hysterical. a betting company and I love it. off we went. I love it though, because <laughs> you caught the train at the right time. But also you said something really interesting, which is the culture of FanDuel over there. I wanted one more question with you, yeah. which was the future of broadcast media, because yeah. the yeah. days of college kids going to, you know, like I said, I went to USC and I know a lot of young people who are even getting their masters in broadcast mm -hmm. and many that I've known who have done that. Um, what are, what are the, where are the jobs, you know, yeah. like, like gone are the days of like really local TV. Um, in my opinion, this is my opinion. So as somebody who made a really fascinating and interesting leap into the world of betting, which obviously has a very big future, how are you seeing, like, are you giving broadcast students advice? How are you seeing the broadcast world shift? Is linear TV dead? Like, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts ready? To I think that's, in, honestly, that's, um, the million dollar question right you look at who the audience is now which is skewed which is skewed younger how they're um digesting information which is in these short little bits and clips mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. nobody wants to listen to anybody for more than 20 seconds it's like okay next thing you know yeah. and we're being conditioned in this way where it's like you want me to watch an hour-long show right and pay attention and like i completely get that and i'm like savvy enough with business that like numbers don't necessarily always support hour long shows when really, especially sports betting shows where 
we try to dice it up into small bits of information that we can then share on social mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that if you're looking for the the Packers and Niners, you want to bet yeah. that show or that game and those lines that are being offered right now, like, let me just go to that. Mm -hmm. I don't need to watch the whole show because I don't care about all the stuff. I don't care about like the fun moments where you're laughing. I just want the stuff, you know? And that's very real. And the, the consumer habits have shifted so much since we got into TV. And, um, you know, the nightly news is the nightly news. And that's just, um, you know, it's antiquated in a lot of ways, no matter mm -hmm. how you try to like repackage it. It's just the time that people don't have to sit and watch at a like this. This is when I have to sit down and watch TV. No one does that anymore. Yeah. So um, to answer your question about how things are changing, I think it's that everybody is going digital and everybody is offering their content in bite sized little pieces yeah. because yeah. that's all anybody wants anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? You you had a, a huge job at SportsCenter, huge job at ESPN doing SportsCenter, and you're right. No one's sitting at home, stagnant for very, very long. I mean, obviously, even movie theaters, because no one wants to sit in a movie for two hours and not have access to their right. device or whatever. So it's just, it's really interesting how the broadcast space is shifting. Mm -hmm. Like, do you even need a traditional journalist-like degree anymore and I mean you know, your master's now, I, is in the small market like I thought about going back to school and yeah. getting my master's and I remember I did and I know we don't have all day but I remember I was like oh do I go back to school get my master's I'm all about like I'm a, I love studying I just I, I'm a nerd like that and so I'm like I'll just keep going to school and then I'm gonna get a great job out of school and like the reality is in broadcasting nobody cares if you have a PhD, they want to know what your presence is on camera. And like, if you can coherently write short sentences to put together a broadcast. And so um, basically, like, I was like, all right, well, I got this internship, I sent my resume tape, which Aaron, you would die if you saw my resume <laughs> tape. From 20 years ago. <laughs> um, I, so I was like, I'm gonna send it to 10 small markets, I ended up getting it job in Butte, Montana. And I remember being on the phone and I was so excited that I got offered the job. And I was like, gosh, and I was again at my parents' house. I'm like, yes, I'm going to go do this TV thing. And I get off the phone and uh, my dad's like, well, how much did they offer you? And I said, <laughs> 18500 for the year. And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> and he's like, did you tell him no? And I'm like, no, I'm going to go to Montana. I'm going to live it up. And he's like, you're going to see how far 18,500 gets you. Um, and I ended up living in low income housing. And I was like at the grocery store, like laugh, looking at labels for the first time being like, that's how much, you know, you come out of college and you're like, I had no idea milk was so expensive. expensive. Like, I, I can't afford milk. Eggs? What? Yeah. yeah. Eggs? Yeah. Never. No. Yeah. So that was an eye opening experience and one that I hope and like, would would want to gift to anyone that's getting into broadcasting like go to a small market yep. mess up ask all yeah. the dumb questions and really find out if this is the industry for you you know yeah yeah no great advice i agree the masters for those of you that want to get it i i respect it i don't think you need it yeah. i agree grit it out in the real world get a job make mistakes you need the reps we were terror i was dreadful when I first started I I didn't even know what oh. to do like I was horrendous so. we should we should like all of us should put together like a little clip of like yeah. all the oh, women wow. you got together um at the Waldorf this like recently yeah. I was I was like yes ladies I, I love it I like get I was like giving you all such hugs um I I like I'm such a fan of every single one of the women that were there. I'm so happy you did that. And I was just like from afar, like just applauding you for doing that because you've been such a leader of the charge of pulling women together and we feed off of each other's energy and we can support each other as we continue to climb. And it's it's really important to do that. Also, we're like cool chicks that are fun to hang out with. So wow. there's we're that. So fun. Hello. <laughs> it was such a fun event. I wish you were there. You're going to have to come to the next yeah. one. But I feel, I feel your support. You are changing the game. Your, your, your aura, your energy. It's, it's, it's 
so contagious and I, I love getting to chat with you and just like love you from afar. And when you're in LA next, please yes. hit me up. I would love to see you in person. Thank you for doing this. I know you're so busy. I don't know how you do it all girl, but yeah, you make it work good. and it's inspiring. You know, this time, is important for me because it gives back to me too i love getting to chat with you and like i said i've been a fan for a long time keep doing what you're doing it means so much to so many people that you don't even know you're affecting and that you are um seriously raising up so keep doing it Mwah. love you from i love far. you i'm gonna see you soon all right lisa bye babe bye, bye.